so I think it's interesting, this cultural shift where marriages are decreasing, uh, less children are being born. Yeah, it's an interesting phenomenon. Welcome back to Out of the Box Podcast, where Steele and I, your host, get to talk about outside of box ideas. Um, today we have a topic about postmodernism and what that what that means what does that have to do with our lives and you know just some shoot out some topics and and see what your thoughts are just kind of get your reactions as well of what you've heard things of that sort but before we actually start i just want to invite you to also hit the like button down below and also subscribe to our channel uh, because it really helps us continue providing amazing content for you. And um, you can also be notified of when we release new content. So um, we would greatly appreciate that. But let's get started. So Steele, have you heard about postmodernism before? Uh, maybe what was your first, you know, person that you heard this from? Or how did this come to yeah. to to the table? I think I knew about it before, but I didn't know the name that it was called, you know, like just different cultural changes and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, growing up, yeah, I sure I noticed it, but I didn't actually hear the term postmodernism until uh, listening to like Jordan Peterson um, on YouTube and stuff. I just stumbled upon him one day. It kept popping up on like suggestions and I was like, oh, and then you keep hearing people kind of mention him every now and again. And you're like, OK, well, who's this, you know, and you check it out. and. And I just heard him talking about, um, well, the psychology lectures, of course, <laughs> but not just that, not just like self-improvement. But then he started talking about postmodernism. So like the idea of um, the idea of what we talked about before um, with philosopher um, Eric Chelstrom on one of our podcasts, something kind of related to it is subjective morality. So the idea that um, whatever the individual believes um, is moral, morally right or wrong is the truth kind of like their own personal truth and so personal subjective morality that each individual determines for themselves instead of there being objective morals that everyone follows kind of getting rid of that and replacing with subjective morals um when you apply that and kind of take that metaphor to postmodernism it's not just that but it's also applying that to the truth to what's true and what's false so then we get to the point where we say truth itself can be determined by the individual and can be subjective. So whatever the individual says is true, well, we have to kind of accept that. Um, I think that's respect that, yeah. a general definition um, from what yeah, I, I think. I think you hit it on the nail pretty good. Yeah, I think the word itself, postmodernism, I think I had heard about it before. But it wasn't until recently that I actually like stumbled upon it being an actual ideology. I, I, I didn't know that it was, you know, I had heard about relativism. I had heard about, you know, relative morality, subjectivism, but I, I hadn't heard about the ideal that kind of encompasses postmodernism because it's, it's almost like the evolution of all those things that I've mentioned into becoming an ideology that right. is basically accepted amongst a group of people. Or yeah. maybe that's also even being uh, advocated now. Yeah, um, there's a it's, behind it too, yeah. Yeah, I think for sure this, it, it's evolved into what it is today. And, you know basically that everyone can believe what whatever they want to believe and it's okay to 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 do that and i know we've kind of talked about relative relativity and you know uh that aspect of ethics and um you know i don't want to get too much into that today just because we've already had a whole uh podcast with chelstrom about that but you know i do want to kind of dabble a little bit about how you know postmodernism can um what 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 are what are maybe the effects that it's having 
Yeah, we were talking about how uh, marriage seems to be decreasing significantly in recent years. And also, and I mean, I want to look this up because I want to fact check myself, but last time I checked, and this was just in the past year, uh, the rate of children being born is also decreasing. Um, the rate of like procreation is decreasing. People are less likely to have kids now less likely to i think what this points to even from i think everyone can agree that an unstable family right is unhealthy now it can work in some cases like single parents can sometimes make it work it's not the most ideal situation and sometimes life gives you what you don't want and you have to deal with it and cope with it but uh the most healthy way to raise a child isn't you know, it's, I think people know this, like, it's not divorce, it's not single parent families, it's, you know, with the both parents in the picture, and, and it, ha- it can have that, de- I mean, this, the psychological literature shows it can have detrimental psychological effects on children, um, maybe not in every single case, but the majority of cases of children, um, it doesn't go well, you know, like, when it's an unstable family kind of thing, and uh, so when, so I think it's interesting, this cultural shift, where marriages are decreasing, uh, less children are being born. Yeah. It's an interesting phenomenon, you know? Yeah. You know, less, less children are being born. And I think one of the other things is, you know, if, if everybody has their own right or truth, the postmodernism, you know, kind of pushes for that to, to happen to, for those, uh, to open different cans of worms of, of like topics and to some degree it's it's almost confusing right because if there's no it where, where there is no order where there is no union it's unstable like you said there's no there is no foundation if there's no foundation of what is true what is a base of truth then you know there's there's disruption and so to some degree, I think this could lead to a very vulnerable, um, vulnerable uh, state for a lot of, you know, kids. You know, I, 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 I did promise to not put in my opinion, but it does seem very unstable, you know, just looking at it from the outskirts, you know, that, you know, if everybody has their own truth, you know, it could lead to not knowing, blurring out the truth of what what's actually you know concrete i think some some postmodernism might say like well you know well that's you know if if people are logical they, they'll realize that there is a truth but it kind of goes against that though like if one says well everybody can decide their truth well what if you have some person that says like well it's okay to to kill human beings you know like I just, you know, I'm introverted. I don't like people like it's my truth. Like, and so it can lead to a lot of kind of worms that, that can, that can be affected by it. Many, uh, many philosophers I've heard argue um, that it's self-defeating to say that whatever personal truth one person says is just automatically true because, well, then can someone could say like, well, your personal truth is not true. So it's like, you have to believe that person's personal truth is true. And if they're saying that person's personal truth is not true, then that means they're telling the truth by your logic. But then that doesn't make sense because I, it just kind of collapses in on itself because, you know, you can, if anyone's truth is true, you know, I say your truth is not true, Jose. Well, that, that means it's true, right? By their logic. But then you'll, but then you say, well, no, your truth is not true. Well, then who's right by that? Who yeah. You have no way to measure who's right and who's, who's wrong with the yeah. postmodernistic thinking. And it's interesting when you look at the history of where it came from, because part of it started with uh, constructivism, which is um, basically a very similar idea. It's kind of like the same ideology that we construct everything that we believe. We don't discover truth. We construct truth is the premise. Um, and yeah. that evolved. It started with positivism, which was the belief that um, the only thing we can derive from reality is what's objectively in, in front of us. That's where hardcore scientific method comes from is positivism. 
anything objective is is what's physically here. Then post positivism was uh, similar. It was a little bit less. Uh, I think it was a little bit less strict. And then that evolved into the constructivism idea that well, maybe we're being a little too strict on saying that we can only derive truth from what's objectively in front of us. Maybe truth can also be subjective. And that's where the study of phenomenology comes from, uh, the study of individual people's kind of interviewing people and getting their individual subjective experiences. And then that's where it evolved, I think, from there into postmodernism. And now it's turned into a cultural war, not just in the United States, but like across the world, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's almost like, yeah, I mean, you would see that in the the conquest of, you know, in the conquest of of civilizations when a lot of European countries started sending boats to to the Americas, right? What they started doing is that they started putting their beliefs onto the Native Americans or vice versa. Sometimes uh, cross culturization, uh, sometimes uh, interculturization, or or like you know overtaking what they they actually believed. And so that that definitely has been a thing in history, you know, um, but I think right now, well, what's at stake, you know, is, you know, what is truth, you know, and I think that's, that's a good question. And, and if everybody has their truth, yeah, then there is no truth. Is that what we're saying yeah, that, that's what that everybody, yeah. you know, and what you just said. everybody should respect their truth. Yeah. What you just said was in the Bible, you know, Pilate said to Jesus, what is truth? So I mean, this is, I mean, this what is, is a, that? A, that was a constant a battle. battle. Yeah, it's a constant. Yeah. yeah. But I think yeah, it, I mean, it's more common now to say what is the truth and to question the truth. And it's become so common that, you know, you have mainstream sources saying things like postmodernistic ideas, you know, and taking that kind of stance on things like we talked about, you know, like, so it's becoming more main. It seems like it's becoming more mainstream in society. Yeah. Uh, and, and I wanted to give an example because it's something I heard recently, which I thought was interesting that, you know, they were studying chimpanzees and how, um, how if a chimpanzee got too aggressive and started breaking things or hitting other people, what chimpanzees do is that they actually kill that chimpanzee, eat the chimpanzee, and then fix the problem like that. That's how they fix the problem. I think we've come to more diplomatic terms than killing human beings to to come to order. But, you know, I think when we face, you know, a change or or a certain movement, then it's, you know, it's just human nature to try to debate it, you know, and I, I think that's that's kind of been kind of like the way to to fight it instead of killing each other. We we debate it and and to to try to find the truth. Yeah. Right? I think debate. So with yeah. with this postmodernism, I think we at, at first from for the from the first glance, it seems like yeah, it's it's really nice to to be accepting of people to to actually embrace people to to create communities, you know, because if there's less things to be fighting about, like politics, fighting about religion, fighting about all these things, well, then we can all live happier. But then it's like, well, not really, right? Because, you know, if we erase that, it, I, you know, at first glance, it, it, it does seem attractive. But once you start looking into it and kind of like thinking about it more deeply, it just doesn't make sense, you know, to just have your own beliefs and your own ideas, you know, or not to to the sense of your own ideas, but it's not it's not natural to just believe that there is no truth. Everybody has their own truth. That's what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, you I know that you say that, that yeah. everybody it, it and I know a lot of wars have been fought about what is truth, you know, does this group have their truth? Does this other have their truth? You know, I, I there's been a lot of fights over this, a lot of debates over this. You know, it, are 
are this group of Christians right? Are this group of Christians right? You know, it's just, you know, sometimes a big mess and, and sometimes they, they get after each other for, for, for trying to find what is true. And so I think it's, it's been a question that's been asked for, for a very long time. Like you said, it's even in the Bible. Because we're always asking, like, you know, I think we have a natural sense of curiosity and a natural sense to try to want to be, you know, searching for, for concrete things. But, you know, if we just say that everyone's on their own path and everybody is trying to find their own truth, there's something iffy about that. Yeah, my yeah, my final thing that you made me think of on that is like, I think it's interesting how in our society now, as postmodernism increases in in terms of its, I guess, effect on main, maybe its effect on mainstream culture is one way you could say it, that we also find the cultural war increasing, not just in hostility, but just in widespread, just being widespread, like everyone just seems like divided. So it's like the more postmodernism takes effect, it's like the the conflict seems to be increasing, like kind of like what you were saying before, you know. Yeah, and even the Bible says that. Like, uh, I know we were finishing off, but the Bible says, you know, you'll know the tree from its fruits, right? So if postmodernism is is going to bring good, then we're going to see good results, right? But you know, we've in this podcast, we talked about what the, the results that have been, you know, no more marriages, you know, people are not having kids. And then I, the, the war of uh, sex ideology, like how people consider themselves, you know, identify themselves. You know, some people can argue that's, that's a good thing. That's a bad thing, but to some degree, it, it has a lot of effects on what you know how people should think you know it's very it's becoming very vulnerable it's a very vulnerable ideology that can easily be misguided you know if one doesn't have their feet on the ground right because one can get carried away with the the emotion of like yes everybody has to be accepted which you know to a certain degree yes everybody has to have their own place you know um, but at the same time, truth has to have its own place as well, right? Otherwise, it won't be true. You know, if everybody has the truth, then there is no truth. And if there is no truth, then, you know, what are we living what the, our lives for? There's no foundation, you know? Our house, you know, if we consider uh, a house to be our life, Truth is always the foundation to how we build our life, right? And if there's no truth, you know, it's just vulnerable. And I think that's a really good, you know, like way to see it. You know, the ideology of not having a truth, a stable truth, can become very unstable to to live life like that. And so it's, I think those are my last thoughts just to kind of wrap it up. But uh, all right, guys. So what, what did y'all think? Like, have y'all heard of postmodernism before? Um, you know, have you learned from someone? Uh, we would like to know, like, on the comments below, what are your thoughts? You know, is this something that you yourself practice uh, or have seen other people uh, kind of getting onto this ideology? We would like to know that, uh, kind of learn a little bit more from you guys as well. Uh, so drop those comments down below and also subscribe to our channel. Uh, so that you can continue to receive some out-of-the-box content. Um, and until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Take care.